Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. I want to show you how classes in Python can inherit attributes from other classes and help you understand when and why this would be useful. So classes basically describe two things. First, they describe data fields, which store information about an object. And second, they describe methods, which are procedures that can act upon that object and its stored data. So when we define a new class, it's useful to be able to take those previously defined data fields and methods from other classes and use those for our own new class. And we can do so through a process called inheritance. And this is really handy when we're defining a new class, which represents a more specific version of a previously defined, we'll say, generic class. Now to understand this concept, let's go down to the garage. Let's start by defining a generic class called vehicle, which describes attributes that are common to all vehicles. So we know every vehicle has paint on it, and therefore we can store the color of that paint in a data field. We also know that every vehicle was manufactured by somebody at some point in time, so we'll store that manufacturer information in another data field as well. And finally, for a vehicle to actually be useful, it has to be able to drive. So we'll define a drive method for all vehicles. So we've just defined three things. Two data fields, which are color and manufacturer, and a method called drive. So this is a good high-level generic description of a vehicle. But what do we do if we want to define something that's more specific to a type of vehicle? Say, for example, a car. To do that, we'll create a new class called car. And we'll say that the car class inherits from the vehicle class. That means that whenever we create a car object, that car will have a color associated with it, like blue, as well as a manufacturer, in this case a Volkswagen. We also inherit that drive method from our vehicle class. Now in addition to the things that we inherit from vehicle, we can describe some methods that are specific to our car in the car class. For example, we can describe a method to open up our sunroof, and we can describe a method to turn on the radio. Those are things that only make sense to do in a car, so we define them in the car class rather than the vehicle class. If I want to describe a motorcycle, it doesn't make sense for me to use that car class, because a motorcycle doesn't have a radio for me to turn on, and it doesn't have a sunroof for me to open. The sunroof is always open on a motorcycle. So what I'll do is I'll define a new class called motorcycle, and I'll say that it inherits from vehicle class. So it'll inherit that color and manufacturer attribute, so this is a black Honda, and I'll also inherit that drive method from the vehicle class. Then I can also describe additional methods that are specific to the motorcycle within the motorcycle class. So I can describe a method for putting on my helmet. And putting on a helmet is something that only makes sense to a motorcycle. So we've just defined three different classes. We have the vehicle class, which contains the uh, attributes common to all vehicles, and then we have two other uh, classes which inherit from vehicle. We have the car class and the motorcycle class. So let's see those in some code. In this example program, which I call a garage full of classy vehicles, I define those three classes that we just talked about. So the first one is the vehicle class, which gives a generic description of a vehicle. And the first method in that class is the constructor for a new vehicle. And so this method is the magic init method. And it takes in the first uh, parameter is itself, which is uh, Python automatically passes a copy of the object to itself. And then we also have the user passes in the color and the manufacturer of the vehicle. And then inside of our constructor method, we create data fields for color and manufacturer within that object, and we assign those passed values to those data fields. And I've also created a third data field down here called gas, and that represents the amount of gas in the gas tank. And I always assign that to five because if you create a new vehicle, uh, when you drive off the lot, it's only appropriate that you leave with a full tank of gas. So that's our constructor method. We've also defined the uh, magic str method and all that does is simply returns a string uh, which gives out the information uh, with those data fields from the car object so it's a color of car of this manufacturer with this much gas uh, in the tank so that's useful for the uh, the user and then the last method down here is the drive method <clears throat> and what the drive method does is it checks that internal data field of gas to see if there's gas in our gas tank uh, if there is, it prints out a unique message saying that the uh, vehicle goes vroom, and then it deducts that gas from the gas tank. And if there wasn't any gas in the gas tank, then the method will print out uh, a similar message, but saying that the vehicle sputters out of gas. So those are the three methods that make up our vehicle class. So let's move on and take a look at the car class. 
So the car class inherits from the vehicle class, which means that it will have all of the methods that were described in the vehicle class, plus the unique methods that are described only in the car class. So those two methods are radio and sunroof. Uh, the radio method just takes in a boolean, and depending on the status of that boolean, will print a message for if the radio is on or off. And the sunroof method operates in a very similar way. It takes in a boolean, and if you open the sunroof, you get some fresh air. Uh, if you close the sunroof, then you get some shade. So those are the two unique methods in the car class. And then moving on to our third class is the motorcycle class. And you can see it also inherits from the vehicle class. So it too will get all of those methods defined up in the vehicle class, plus the unique motorcycle method, which is the helmet method. So in the helmet method, we pass in a boolean, and if we uh, put on our helmet, we print out a message of nice and safe, and if we put off, take off our helmet, uh, we print out danger, danger. So those are the three classes. Uh, now that we have those defined, down here we actually create two objects, uh, one of car and one of motorcycle. And so to do that, I've called the car constructor, and I pass in the parameters of blue and Volkswagen for the color and manufacturer. And you notice that even though I'm calling the car constructor of the car class, this is inheriting that magic init function that was defined up in the vehicle class. So when I pass in blue and Volkswagen, those are being assigned to data fields within the object for color and manufacturer appropriately. I do the same thing down here with the motorcycle. I call the motorcycle constructor and I create my black Honda. So now that I've got a, uh, a car and a motorcycle, let's try taking that car out for a spin. And so to do that, we simply call the drive method on our newly created car object. And you see when we do that, we get a method message saying that the blue Volkswagen goes vroom. So we've taken the car out, let's give the motorcycle a chance to perform. If we call the exact same drive method on the motorcycle, you see we get a, a different message here. It says that the black Honda goes vroom. So this is showing that we're using that method and those data fields that were defined in the vehicle class, um, but those data fields have unique values for this object that we've created, those values being blue Volkswagen or black Honda, and the drive method is using those values to create its message. So we've taken them for a short drive. I'm having so much fun on my motorcycle that I'm just going to keep going and going and going. And we can see here I go on and on and on and on and eventually my black Honda sputters out of gas. So what's happening here is we've been keeping track of that gas data field within the uh, motorcycle object <clears throat> and decrementing it every time we call the drive uh, method. And eventually that runs out. And so what this demonstrates is that that data field stores its value from successive calls to the object. And this is different from calls to a, a standard function which has a local variable, because in the case of a local variable and a function, once the function is done uh, executing and has been returned out of, that local variable will lose its value. That value is gone unless you did something to, to explicitly save it. But an object, when we modify or act on that data field, it's storing that value until we go back to that object, uh, and it'll continue to store that value as long as the object is alive. So now that we're out of gas and we're sitting on the side of the road, let's start fiddling with some knobs in our car. And the first one we can is the radio. So I'm gonna call the radio method on the car object and pass it a Boolean value of true, representing turning on the radio. And you can see if I do that, I get some rockin' tunes. And I can also, uh, let's say I want to close my sunroof because it's getting kind of hot out there and I want to turn on the AC. Whoops, I have to spell my correctly. And you can see there that my paleness prefers the shade. So I've successfully closed the sunroof on my car. Uh, if I want to go over to my motorcycle and uh, put on my helmet, I can do that by calling the helmet method of the motorcycle uh, object we created. You can see now I have my helmet on, I'm nice and safe. And let's say I also want to open up the sunroof on my motorcycle. To do that I could call the sunroof method on the motorcycle. And if I run that you see, whoa! Oh well we got an error, and of course we got an error. There is no such thing as a sunroof uh, for the motorcycle. You can see over here that the error message it gives us says that the motorcycle object has no attribute of sunroof. 
And that's because we define sunroof within the car class, so it only exists within cars. Motorcycle does not have that uh, method. So it should be pretty clear how both motorcycle and car are able to inherit methods from the uh, vehicle class. But let's ask a question, can you create another class that would then inherit methods from car and or from motorcycle? And the answer there is yes. And so let's actually demonstrate that by creating a new class. And we're going to call that e-car, meaning an electric car. And we're going to say that electric car inherits from car. And by inheriting from car, electric car is going to get all of the methods defined in the car class. And because car inherits from vehicle, we're also going to get all of the methods of the vehicle class. But this brings us to a little problem here is that the drive method checks to see whether or not there's gas in the gas tank. We know that electric cars don't use gas, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So how can we modify our electric car class to, to not have to worry about gas? And to do that, we actually will create a new version of the drive method inside of our electric car class. And so if I come down here in eCar, I create a similar definition to what we had up there in the vehicle class and rather than checking for whether or not there's gas in the gas tank I'm just simply going to print out the message that my e-car goes vroom uh, actually let's change that because electric cars don't go vroom they actually go shh they're very very quiet uh, and that'll that'll be my, my e-car class that represents the main difference uh, between my car and, and the vehicle so now I define that let's go down here and actually build an electric car and so to do that I call my e-car uh, constructor pass in my color and then I pass in my uh, manufacturer and then we'll actually take that e-car out for a drive and if we do that you can see my red Tesla goes shh and if I want to open up the sunroof on my red Tesla to prove that we have those methods from the car class as well. I can do that too. And so what's happening here is we've defined a drive function in our highest level class, the vehicle class, but then we also defined, uh, redefined that drive function down in the lower level e-car class. And so that definition of the drive function here in the e-car class is actually overriding and replacing that higher level definition from the vehicle class. Now that we've seen how classes can inherit methods and data fields from other classes, you might be saying, why is this useful? Why don't I just individually define those methods and data fields every time I create a new class? Well, you could do that, but as your program grows in size, it can become more and more difficult to maintain any changes you make to those methods across all the different classes. Say, for example, I had created 20 different types of vehicles. So I created cars, motorcycles, dump trucks, school buses, on and on and on. And then I realize I need to add a new method to all those vehicles. I realize I forgot to put brakes in all of them. Well, if I have them all referencing that single vehicle class and inheriting from there, I can make that change and add brakes in one place rather than having to track down all 20 of those other classes to add the brakes. This will make your code maintenance a lot easier and also improves on vehicle safety. Happy programming.